I threw those around my car. I think Ben actually released a, a video today. Yeah? Well, how to fix a pink dryer? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think so. I think it had to do with Samsung. Rods, maybe, or something. <sighs> Join. It was like high, and then they're like, "Oh, tiny door." <laughs> that is a tiny door. You stick it on the wheels now. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's right. <laughs> I think. It has been a while since I worked on one of these, but I'm pretty sure like everything is done from the back. I mean, you gotta like dismantle it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you that's you gotta get all the way taken apart. Yeah, I don't. Know. You know, when was the last time I worked on one of these? Probably like 15 years. Probably more than 15 years ago. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, like, taking one apart, like, actually, like, gotten to the, you know, the guts Were of you, it. like, doing it for a customer back then? No, man. Dude, it was a set that I sold. Mm. Like, I didn't, like, realize it was anything special. I had this really nice matching set. They were probably, like, mm -hmm. just like this. You know what I mean? It, it, like, and it was, like, I don't remember. They were nice. They were either white or they were one of the colors, but they were mint. Mm hmm but something happened, I think the front cover fell off or something, and I had to put the wires back. I had no idea what I was doing, but I figured it out eventually. Huh. How old is Marcus and Eugene? I'm 24. <laughs> I'm 40, guys. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm 18. <laughs> yeah. right. Should I, uh, can, you think the miners are too loud? Just get up. No, I think they're okay. Okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right, yeah, 40, guys. 40. <laughs> Uh, so guys, today we're going to work on this uh, pink Maytag. This is the DE701, so it's an electric uh, dryer. This is obviously the match to the pink uh, washer that I'm working on. That washer currently is sitting uh, basically in a box. I'm waiting on the cabinet to get powder coated, sandblasted, powder coated, and the base, and what else? That's it, really. Then I have to just dismantle the top console and clean it up and put it all back together. So hopefully the powder coater will be done in a few weeks. I think he said that he can't get to it for a couple of few weeks, and I don't know how long it's going to take to do afterwards. But uh, meanwhile, we're going to work on this guy, and I'm pretty sure that this dryer is functional with the exception that it doesn't heat anymore. This dryer did work from what I understood, but I think I, just from moving it around so many times, and I think I dropped this one time, 
this fell right this it is one that fell. Fell. It fell. yeah and uh, so now it doesn't heat but we're going to test it again just to be sure and also make sure that this isn't a completely lost cause let's see awesome. if we can someone said they're watching from knoxville tennessee with their six-year-old son benny he might be your number one fan oh appreciate it man so the light does work Who's my number one fan? Benny? Benny. What's up, Benny? How you doing? All right, so we're going to start time dry. And this is a... This thing's really quiet. Yeah, I mean, it's really big, How and the drum doesn't seem very it's big. It's so small. So it's probably pretty well. Well, once we take it apart, you'll see, like, just how, like, inefficient it was. Like, this has got, like, a lot of, like, belts and pulleys and stuff, and... Okay, so this one is a pull to start. Definitely not heating. Uh, before I get started with this, guys, though, I have some really exciting news. We're doing like a little bit of a Black Friday or, or fan appreciation. And so uh, I have my t-shirts here. We have them for a deep, deep discount, 40%. right? 40% off, guys. It's like yeah. half price, they're like practically. 10 bucks, basically. Yeah, they're essentially like 10 bucks. And you can buy them at my website, LorraineFurniture.com, and you could use the coupon code. It's just YouTube. YouTube. So just put, when I ask for the coupon code, just put YouTube. Uh, it does only apply to the t-shirts and, and my fancy pants six-in-one screwdriver. So if you want to make a, like the perfect Christmas gift for any washer aficionado, that's what you got to get. So go. uh, we'll have that for like this entire weekend, probably through Monday. And then that's it. So if you want to get them, guys, get them. I appreciate it. Uh, I mean, you want to tell them about the other important thing? The other Oh, our Maytag oil? Yeah, yeah. Also, guys. So I'll go grab one. Go grab one. Go grab one so I can show it off. So there's another important development. Um, as some of you know, Maytag has discontinued <laughs> their or Whirlpool has discontinued the Maytag transmission oil. And I was really bummed out about that because they had like five transmissions that needed rebuild and I couldn't find any oil anywhere. Well, I was lucky enough to find a new old stock transmission oil and I bought it and I sent it out to uh, a lab for analysis and we have successfully replicated it. So this is genuine Lorraine furniture, Maytag, transmission oil it's the correct amount now full disclosure guys this is 32 ounces i know that the old maytag bottle called for 34. i've rebuilt a lot of maytag transmissions and i've never been able to get 34 ounces and i always wind up with leftovers so this full bottle on a uh, counterweight pitman style transmission will work and the orbital transmission this is also more than enough so uh if you guys need any we have them in stock you can find them on my website uh look for that part number 6-0560 800 um and so there it is if you guys need it okay let's get started with this now guys i'm going to tell you i haven't dismantled one of these machines in like forever so we're gonna have to kind of learn learn along the way. I did put this on a cart because I think most of the action's gonna be in the back. And it just I picked the worst part too. Oof. Yeah, let me set the camera up a little bit nicer. Marcus, before I start to ask for it, give me a bag with a, a marker too, so I could just start bagging some of this stuff. And then, can you get also get my three eighths nut driver? That's the blue.
Oh, uh, do you can you give me the the three eighths the like the hand oh, screwdriver? Yeah, because yeah. I that does not keep enough for these. Uh, Dude, I got those uh, a couple of years ago. I had a uh, one of those a dual fuel 36 mm -hmm. inch, and uh, dude, those are it's a really cool stove. I don't, they're not worth ten thousand dollars, but you know, we're talking about Thermador stoves. They are really nice, but guys, I just don't think that they're worth ten thousand dollars. Like KitchenAid to make a dual fuel? They do. Yeah. I mean, there's a like. So there's cheaper options. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, like, the first thing you'll notice, guys, is just how much space is lost with this mechanism, with this blower assembly. And so, basically, the way that this machine works, you see if I can get a little bit more light in here. So basically this big motor spins pretty fast and turns this large pulley and also the blower and then this reduces again to this guy which turns the drum at its nice and slow speed. So we're going to have to take all of this apart. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. It'll be fun. I haven't taken one of these apart in a really long time, so I'm a little bit intimidated uh, just from lack of memory. So hopefully I don't ruin it. Which I'm sure I probably won't. Oh, jeez. Really did a number on this one. Put the strain relief like on the inside. Someone said that the reason why the cabinets on these dryers, so the reason why the cabinets on the dryers are so huge is because. They used the same cabinets on the condenser dryers in the late 50s and early 60s. I've actually, I don't think I've ever seen one of those types of dryers, that's for sure. That'd be really cool to see though. Um, so, let's see. Presumably, I'm gonna have to take most of this stuff out to get the drum out and then once i get the drum out i'll have access to the, the heating element which is where i suppose is where the problem is so i guess we just uh nothing to it but to do it i'm gonna grab my vacuum real quick and see if there's any Ooh, 25 cents this is the job that's gonna pay me Pay me back. Ooh, a big chunk of lint. That's just lint. That's it, guys. Just 25 cents today. Add that to the retirement fund. All right, so the... 
So I guess I'm just going to start from the most obvious stuff and work my way back. So I'm going to just start removing these pulleys. I'm going to take this elbow off and then this housing. And then I'm just going to kind of start working my way back. I have, uh, my memory is uh, definitely a little foggy. Oh, wow, 28 people in You don't need to take the drum out, the whole cabinet comes off, is what someone said. Oh, I should just take the whole cabinet out? Really? Let me, uh... So the front panel is screwed on. The top looks like it can come off without too much trouble. So what I would just disconnect everything that's connected to the power unit and then just take the whole cabinet off. I mean, that's, that seems plausible. Well, I gotta take the whole thing apart anyway, so that's uh, kind of not an option for me because this is gonna get the full the full treatment. Oof. Big tight spring. Okay, let me grab some pliers real quick. So we're gonna need a This is a 3 8 square. There we go. Alright, well I still have to get the spring out. Let me grab my pliers too. Spring has got some. It's got some meat to it. Okay. You should bring this other light. <laughs> It's not too bad. A little extra dust. And then this guy. Right, this is right here. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. It's a nice long one. Unless it has any part numbers. Yeah, it's got to be it. 8311013. That's that drive belt. I had that new. That's good. So it looks like I do have belts for this dryer. Now this guy, does this just come out? Yes, it does. Wow. It looks like there's some, there's a wafer that goes back here. I'm gonna leave that on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marker, I'm going to mark right here the position of the motor wires, and so it's going to be R, green, blue, BL for blue, and then W for white, and that's kind of in descending order. Now 
me just get that out of the way. Yeah, well, this is going to take some doing. So I think, yeah, the next step is going to be to remove this blower housing. But I kind of do want to take the cabinet off. That would be kind of cool to see. I think it's like totally, totally doable. Let me see here. Okay, so let's take that harness out. And that's just gonna... So the light is going to be BR and then W and then yellow here and then R and B. These connections are terrible. They're very loose so they're going to have to get probably redone because they're just kind of okay so that is undone that is undone and then I think probably this power block This kind of will stay with the machine. This is going to come off with the cabinet. And this has got to be the door switch, but this. It comes off with the lid. mounted to the dryer and not to the actual cabinet. All right, well, whoever said it, I'm going to try it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> it was Scott that said it, I believe. Yeah. Oh, well, Scott's been with us. He's worked on these for a long time. want to come off. Is just gonna go with it. I don't know. First time for everything, Marcus. Yeah. I think there's some screws on the front door that I need to take out. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, I think. 
think it just, it just comes out. Let me see. Like, we need to get the cabinet away from the, like, can you, like, pull, it's like, pull the cabinet, like, out a little bit? I keep, <laughs> we're on wheels, so I keep yeah, playing. Yeah, um, lift it. Now, I guess we just have to, like, lift it. Oh, boy. That's why. <laughs> okay. The lights, uh. Oh, wow. Is that the. Oh, there it is. It's, oh, yeah, there's the heat. Huh. Well, I don't think anyone can see it. Okay, well, here, let's. This is on my foot, Marcus. Let's, like, oh. let's move it. <laughs> Let me, like, make a little space first. So, it's, uh. It's interesting. It was very interesting. Okay, so let me just move this away. Move it, uh, move that, and we'll put it like right in front of the stove, and then we can kind of show. Okay, guys, let me show you first. So this was like the original design, the halo of heat. And the reason this wasn't exactly a super popular design was if clothes got stuck here, they would be so close to the heating element, they would cause a fire. And a lot of people, they didn't change their lint filter very often because it was in the back. And so that's uh, pretty much that. But the, let's look at the heating element, guys. It's really interesting. Let me see if I could... Uh, Oh goodness, I gotta plug in the camera. I'm gonna show you guys quickly, I gotta plug in the camera. But yeah, here's the heating element. And it doesn't look like, oh yeah, it is broken, there it is. You see it? That's why I was getting no heat. See that? Totally broken, guys. Oops. Sorry guys, this is impossible to do, but. There it is. It looks like it totally broke. But look at this lint buildup. This is gross. Everything else seems to be in good shape. It looks like the screws that hold the helmet, I could probably pull that whole thing out and then dismantle the entire housing. So that's cool. Let me get back to the... Plug this camera in so it doesn't die. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick vacuum just to get some of this stuff out of here so I don't lose some screws and piles of debris.
caps. So this is like the, it's like the moisture sensor oh. from like 1960. So the wire was actually built into the baffles and they picked up and you'll see the dryness control board that's on the thing. It's not really like a board per se, but it's like, you know, early electronics, I suppose. Okay. Oh, buddy. Well, this is like a lot less intimidating when you have like no cabinet around. That's pretty cool though. Oh, look at, yeah, the blower is like free wheels independent of the so this pulley from the motor would have turned a blower and then that larger pulley would have been the one that turns the actual thing and it would have just kind of been right in the middle of it huh that's pretty cool and then this is just like a like a grease point and that spring kept the tension on everything wow that's pretty cool all right well let's uh continue then what do I do with my flathead screwdriver? Okay. Where? Oh, there it is. Someone said, be sure not to let the carbon brush and spring fly away. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be... Uh, someone said, since the dryer is so unsafe, is it worth fixing and reselling? I would be weary of selling it to a consumer. Uh, so this dryer is not going to go to like a, like a kind of a generic customer. This is going to sell the, presumably with the washer and it's going to sell to like somebody who's looking for a pink washer and dryer. And that's not going to be the person that like is going to run this machine like 30 loads a week or anything. Whoa. And if they do, they're going to be fully aware of aware of the the downfalls or whatever of this dryer because this wasn't this is early technology and it's just like I don't know, having a ringer washer or something. You got a $10 donation from Charles. Oh, thanks Charles. I appreciate it. Um so yeah, this isn't going to go to like an unknowing customer. This is going to be somebody who's uh, familiar with older technology equipment and is actually seeking out a piece, you know, to maybe they have, a, you know, a small collection or um, you have like your modern set and then you have like a nice vintage set to kind of accent the laundry room or something. But this is not going to just go to somebody who doesn't know what they're buying because it, it First of all, it wouldn't last very long because it's it is old and under like abusive condition, which is like when I say like abusive, it's more like negligence. You know, just because they don't know the ins and outs of this dryer, it would probably fail pretty soon under warranty, and I would have to fix it. So, um, yeah, this is going to go to somebody who knows what they're buying basically and understands the ins and outs of it, and they'll say. If, if they're not super familiar with this particular dryer, they'll certainly uh, get a bit of an education from me uh, as far as you know the do's and don'ts and what you can do and not do with this machine. Um, when it's done, it'll be fully refurbished, as in it'll be as safe as it was in 1966 or whatever year this dryer was made. I think 66 was the set. So it's gonna be in, you know, 100% usable condition and nobody's going to get electrocuted and die and all that good stuff. So, uh, moving on. Alright. Now the carbon brushes, I... I... It looks like this got snipped. I see a connection back here that looks like there's nobody home. And that's really about it. So I'm curious to see if there's any carbon left on this guy. I think there is. But I'm going to have to take more apart just to figure it out.
Ooh, that's a piece of metal. Oh, goodness. Get it in your hand? Yeah. Well, it's in there now. Sorry, guys, I got a little bit of a metal shaving. Shots up to date. Yeah. I don't know. And then Scott says said he always tells you to work with us. Yeah, I know. I know. Is this Scott Scott? Yeah. Oh. Hey Scott. Alright, so these are blower screws. Not too shabby. And then it looks like this is a fiber washer. Oh, this blower wheel is awesome. Look at that. Maytag part number 3 11646. And this is Bakelite. That's pretty cool. Go to the bathroom all, the way all right, let's see. Is there more? It looks like a lot of hair. That's definitely a lot of hair. And then this looks like a split washer. And it looks like there's a retaining ring. So it looks like once I pull this retaining ring out, I should be able to slide the drum out. And then that'll pretty much get us down to some pretty basic framework. I wonder if there's anything else. I know this carbon brush that you guys are showing me. I'm going to try and pull it out and see. Let me see if I can show you guys a picture first. Or get it on camera, rather. It is... Let's see if I could get my finger in here. This guy, let me see if I can zoom in. As you can see, there's nothing connected to it, so evidently this auto dry thing didn't work. Um, I'm not really sure. So that would have just made contact to the housing and that wire was what made the completed the circuit so huh i don't know let me grab a long screwdriver and see what i can do Alright guys, let's see if I can do it without ruining it. Get that guy 
buy some band-aids. We just got 200 in, back in. We oh, were, yeah. We got We band got plenty. <laughs> If I was in a customer's house, this would probably be a very difficult repair. So it looks like there's a little spring. the carbon brush I'm just gonna have to see if I can get it to fall out let me uh, Chewie's in a barking mood today guys oh here it is yeah. there's our carbon brush I don't know how much or how little they're supposed to be there, but we'll bag this and I'll try and find a new one. If not, we'll reuse the old one. Okay. So now I was at the Tub removal stage. So I'm going to remove this blower. I was going to take this plastic guy out, put this in with my bag of blower parts, and then let me grab my retaining ring and see what I could do. like a flat washer this might be a fiber washer and then this connection this uh, snap ring connector and it looks like this might be like I am obnoxious <laughs> <laughs> I give him a break <laughs> made in the USA I think there's bearings in this housing guys this is kind of cool all right, let me get all this stuff in my blower housing bag. And I think I'm ready to pull the tub out. Let's see. Chewie is the boss. He is. Okay, I'm getting down to the nitty gritty with this guy, but this is like another kind of like a design flaw, if you will. Uh, you see this, this is, uh, you know, one of those things where it's like, I don't think their engineering was exactly top notch. This is really cool though, because this has, it looks like two sets of what almost looks like needle bearings on the, you know, like one on this side and one on the other side. 
It says made in the USA. Torrington. And then I can't see what else it says. Let me... Looks like a part number, so it says Torrington, made in the USA, oh goodness, my eyes, I can't see that well, where's my flashlight, uh, B like boy, dash, one, four, one, six maybe, one, six or one, eight. Made in the USA, Torrington. So that's a, these are pretty cool because these are like pretty large. Like this needle bearing goes about that far, so it's it's a good inch wide. And I don't think it doesn't look like it's a serviceable part. So this is one of those things that we'll probably have to just clean it, put some fresh grease in here, and make sure it stays sealed otherwise uh, there's some space in the back here where it looks like you could extract this bearing there's some old grease back there too but it looks like with the correct puller you could pull this bearing out i've never seen one like this before so i'm not going to bother with it um just before i put it back together i'm going to make sure it's clear and clean of any debris and that's gonna and so that this housing is held on by three bolts. We could probably take that off, and then we're down to like the actual like skeleton frame of this thing, huh? I like totally wasn't even that hard. I'm like a little bit underwhelmed, and I really was kind of like maybe slightly intimidated by this dryer, but I guess not so much anymore. It was a uh, little anticlimactic if you will but I don't know let me vacuum out some of this lint that's been here for a million years and we'll we'll press on <laughs> really kind of impressive like how far dryer technology has come like this is like <laughs> is there certainly a bit complicated that's for sure if I had to kind of pick a term for it definitely a little complicated I wonder if this is like does the light bulb like go through here just like lives in this housing that's like an airflow restriction it's like I don't know. 
it's strange. This, this is definitely a strange dryer. I can see why it wasn't like super popular. It's just kind of based on the architecture. It doesn't seem like it would uh, be a super long lasting type of unit, but um, so this frame is like kind of like in mint condition. So I'm probably not going to get this powder coated. I'm going to clean it and see if there's any like damage whatsoever or anything. I could just do some touch ups. Uh, the motor works fine. Uh, that I'll probably either re-grease it or maybe I'll send it to the motor guy and have him kind of go through it. Just kind of like clean it up and, and make it pretty again. Otherwise, this is a pretty basic motor, so I could probably just swap it out with almost anything. But yeah, well, I'll take this uh, little housing off and that's going to, that's, I, mean, I guess we're kind of done. I thought this was going to be, how long is this live streaming going on? An hour or so. Oh, all right. So, I guess not too shabby. <clears throat> I was reading something yesterday about the dumbest lottery winners. And this guy went bankrupt after 84 days of winning the lottery. What? Yeah. Yeah. How much did he win? Oh, it was like... I think it was like 20 million or something like that. That's insane, yeah. dude. Like, how do you even... What do you What do you gotta buy? <laughs> you know? That's... Do you, like, gamble at all? I don't know. That's crazy. I like, mean... Even if you bought something that you would still have the worth of, like, the you know? Like, he had to have done something that just... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. That is kind of crazy, actually. Lower housing. All right. Well, guys, I think that's going to be a good stopping point. I have, uh, I have it basically stripped down. This is like the, the heart of the unit. This looks like it was a pretty expensive piece of metal. Well, this even has a part number on it. 3-10989. And so this would have had the operating thermostat, which is right here. The light bulb. It looks like there's an additional port for something else. If, it, if this was a, maybe this isn't the deluxe deluxe model. And then it has this copper band around it. This is what kind of transfers the electricity or the signal from the baffles to the actual moisture sensor and that's copper so we'll have to kind of clean that a little bit and make it decent but really other than that this dryer just kind of needs to get cleaned up it needs a heating element which I'm pretty sure I have a million of those in stock and we'll end up restringing it I'll probably uh, work on the base first and we'll get like the tub back together and then I'll work on the cabinet next, kind of get it back together. And yeah, that should be that afterwards. We'll have this, this bad boy ready to start drying some clothes. I really can't wait to do laundry in this thing. It's going to be kind of uh, fun. Like, I know it's just like, even like if you think about today's standards, like this washer doesn't wash better than like a lot of modern machines do. But, like, they're just so cool because this is, like, a part of, like, American history and, like, you know, things were built with, like, such good quality back then and, and it was designed to be repaired, like, essentially for forever. Like, there wasn't really, like, a shelf life like modern appliances do. And, you know, Maytag, they were really one of the shining stars where they kept their parts in stock or they just didn't change the parts very often. And, and that's kind of like what really gave them like legendary status is because this dryer 
they switched from this dryer to like the regular kind of what their modern dryer is but like they never changed anything afterwards like there was there's not like a million different designs of maytag dryers it was just like the two and then like the maytag washer it's like there was only two designs really there was like the small capacity machine and the big well there was like the the, the first generation one the, the amp one but that was like kind of short-lived but essentially like from like the 1960s until like the modern you know the last one that rolled off the line in 04 like they took the same belt they had the same water pump like they the transmissions were for the most part interchangeable like you could with some exceptions as long as it was a large capacity machine you could and you know that's just like a really cool thing so Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Oh, we'll see you. Uh, real quick, what's speaking up? of dryers, let them know about the LG um, kit. That oh we yeah, yeah. So guys, we're working on a new video and a new like repair kit. So uh, this is going to be for the LG dryers. Uh, we actually completed a uh, like a complete rebuild kit for LG dryers. It's going to have all the rollers, idlers, belts, all that good stuff that you need to kind of just refresh the whole thing. Hopefully we'll have that video done in the next couple of weeks. I'm hoping sooner than that, but we do have the product already. Yeah, but you could go on the website product. and if you look under our appliance repair kits, we have the appliance repair kit there and it's the LG dryer rebuild kit if you guys ever need it. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time.